For 10,000 years, the Imperium of Man has endured under the rule of the Immortal Emperor. The worlds of man are scattered across the galaxy, threatened by savage aliens, heretics who defy the Emperor's will, and horrors lurking upon forgotten worlds. It is a time of endless war, selfless heroism, and blackest infamy. I see fortresses in the stars. A circle of six, but they sleep yet and must be awakened. Lie upon the storms of chaos. Gather your rivals around you. Discord and terror throughout a thousand worlds. Abaddon the Despoiler, War Master of Chaos. You speak in meaningless riddles. What are the fortresses in the stars? Answer me or die now! Stop this foolishness. I have consorted with creatures far more powerful than you. Speak, Crone, but I will remember your insolence. <laughs> Seek the hand of darkness. Take the eye of night. With these, the citadels will be yours to command. A chorus of a billion throats will cry your name in fear and hatred. The stars themselves will run red with blood. If you have the courage for it, war master. If what you say is true, Captain Spire, a vast chaos fleet is massing for attack. Inquisitor Horst, are you sure of this man? Maybe we should consider someone else. Isn't this captain from a planet that rebelled against the Emperor's will? Enough! His faith will be tested thoroughly. For he is the salvation of mankind. Obey his, his words, for he will lead you to the light of the future. Honor his servants, for they speak in his voice. Tremble before his majesty, for we all walk in his immortal shadow. Let us begin. to be certain. The enemy we face is no ordinary foe. I understand. You are to be promoted to the rank of Admiral and given command of the fleet. I will not fail you, Inquisitor. There is much to do and little time, Admiral Spire. I fear a storm coming to the Gothic sector. One we are not yet prepared to face. Yeah. 
The Orcs plague the whole galaxy from end to end, with their ceaseless warring and strife. They are a warlike, crude and highly aggressive green-skinned Xenos race, organized in a primitive and brutal society, rooted so deeply in war that peace is utterly incomprehensible to them. Their ships are often ill-kempt, unreliable rust buckets, kept in operation only by the constant effort of Orc mech boys and their Gretchen slaves. Orc pirate attacks are brutally direct, with their ships rushing headlong towards their target, guns firing wildly as they come. They cannot be bargained with or bought, save with weapons that they will inevitably turn against those who try to bribe them. Orcs have a need for speed. Their ships commonly mount a plethora of thrusters, boosters and extra drives, usually all wired up to a prominent red button in the cockpit. experience have I learned that underestimating the greenskins is a fast route to the grave. Attack is the secret of defense. Defense is the planning of an attack. Lord Admiral Ravensburg believes that we can learn something of our enemy's strategy by infiltrating a Chaos command ship recently identified by Inquisitor Horst's agents. I am to find this ship, board it, and bring back any clues I can find about the invaders' plans. Now is my chance to ensure their faith in me was not misplaced. The purpose of this relic may yet still be a mystery, but it is now secured and protected by sworn guardians of the Inquisition. The Emperor is with us, but we must remain watchful, for Abaddon's thirst for revenge will never be slaked. The Eldar are an ancient and arrogant alien race. Their ships appear fragile, but are highly maneuverable and equipped with powerful, sophisticated weaponry. Their vessels are protected by hollow fields that distort our augur readings, making them very difficult to hit. In addition, the Eldar Corsairs have captains and crews who are quite skilled at void combat. Eldar Corsairs prefer hit-and-run attacks. To counter this, use strength in numbers and compact defense. The Inquisitor suspects that the Corsairs are connected to an Eldar craft world lurking within the Graildark Nebula. Once you engage the Eldar, report any information you can gather on the craft world and the Corsairs. Oldsworld is under heavy attack! Heretics are storming our defenses! We need immediate reinforcement! Admiral Spire. Yes, Inquisitor. Gather every vessel you can and travel to Orm's world at once. You must stop Abaddon, whatever the cost. He is searching for an ancient artifact known as the Eye of the Night. Do not let the Despoiler claim this relic, Admiral. May the Emperor guide your guns, and may the heretics feel his wrath! There are some amongst my Ordos who believe that to fight chaos, one must understand it. Whatever secrets the Eye of Night holds, they are a danger to one's very soul.
a moral threat of corruption, of darkness, of heresy. The mighty Imperial Navy has kept this relic out of Abaddon's hands, and in that victory I see the salvation of the Sector and of myself. Despoiler has claimed it in his talent grasp. I do not know what unholy purpose Abaddon has for the Hand of Darkness, but we can be assured that we now face an even greater challenge from the Chaos Fleets. We must regroup. We must gird ourselves in our hatred of the enemy and trust in the Emperor that he will not forsake the Gothic Sector in our darkest hour, and we cannot, must not, fare again. The Eye of Night has fallen into the clutches of Abaddon the Despoiler. The Relic and all its dark secrets belong to the enemy, and with that, I feel the Gothic Sector tremble. I fear that Abaddon's victory here seals defeat for the Imperial Navy. The Emperor protects. The only thing that the Imperial ship crews fear even more than traveling in the war is traveling in the warp while there is a storm raging. The light of the Emperor's Astronomicon can no longer guide the navigator, and entire sectors can be isolated, preventing any help from afar. The chaos, at home in the distortion of reality, becomes an even greater threat. And even the most experienced navigators can only hope for a safe arrival at their destination. O oh, eternal God Emperor, preserve us from the dangers of the void. Inquisitor, with all respect, is Exterminatus the only solution? Admiral Spire, it is said that heresy is like a tree. Its roots lie in the darkness, while its leaves wave in the sun. You can prune away its branches, even cut the tree to the ground, but it will grow again ever stronger. Such is the nature of heresy, and why it is so difficult to destroy. Some may question my right to destroy a world of ten billion souls, but those who truly understand realize that I have no right to let them live. No sacrifice is too great, no treachery too small.
billion people murdered in one dreadful hour. The name of Abaddon's ship, the Planet Killer, will haunt us for eternity. It is a sign of the dire threat facing the Gothic Sector, that the Imperial Navy would even consider an alliance with any alien. The Eldar are an arrogant and deceitful race, but it seems they are willing to assist us. We may yet be able to save the Sector, but I dare not inquire why the Eldar have proposed this alliance. It is said that for any question asked of the Eldar, they return three answers, all of which are terrifying to comprehend. The Eldar's arrogance knows no bounds, but we have repaid them for their insults in blood. No longer will the Eldar Corsairs attack our convoys or raid our systems. These aliens dare to try and manipulate us into their schemes. But we of the Imperial Navy are no one's puppet. With the Eldar threat destroyed, we can now focus our efforts on our deadliest enemy, Abaddon, the Despoiler. You can't get away from me, Hermes! My secret weapons gonna clump all of you! Admiral, the Orc must have captured the Cyclonic Torpedo from an ancient Imperial ship, possibly from the era of the Great Crusade. These are used for exterminatus. The Orc Horde is a beast. Destroy the head, the body dies. Without their war boss, the Orc ships become easy prey. One by one, we hunted them down, dispensing the Emperor's implacable wrath upon their Xenos vessels. Our attacks scattered their ships, and the once fearsome green tide was silenced. What can possibly justify interrupting me, Ugandus? Lord Admiral, the light of the Astronomicon shines once more. Reinforcements have been dispatched to the Gothic Sector. The Warp Stone... It is gone! Tremble before the majesty of the Emperor, for we all walk in his immortal shadow.
my ship is closest to the Blackstone Fortresses. All power to the Void Shields. I will attempt to put an end to this madness. By my faith, may the light of the Emperor spread to the farthest star. By my duty, the galaxy will belong to the righteous. By my actions, the Imperial Navy shall be honored and remembered upon holy terror. For the Emperor of Mankind and for the Battle Fleet of the Cancel the retreat order. The heroic sacrifice of Captain Abridol and the Flame of Purity have shut down the Blackstone fortresses. All remaining vessels, we have to board them and take control! Our forces at Schindelgeist boarded the isolated Blackstone fortress in an attempt to recapture it. Within, there was no sign of any crew. The walls pulsed with energy, and every surface had become a deep-veined black, like the void of space. Suddenly, a high-pitched whine filled the air, and the walls became ruddy in color. A sense of panic filled the hearts, and the fortress was abandoned in haste. In the end, the fortress destroyed itself. It should have been a pleasing sight to see such destruction. Yet while I cannot say just why, my heart was filled with sorrow. I could not dismiss the feeling that something magnificent had died. Who can tell what Abaddon might have done with all six fortresses? Some things are too dangerous to be allowed to exist. And someone decided that the Blackstone Fortresses were amongst those things. I see fortresses in the stars. A circle of six, but they sleep yet and must be awakened. Great sacrifices had been made and great heroes had confronted the challenge. Through the determination, courage, and loyalty of every man in the Navy, the war had been won. Billions of men had found death. Planets had been destroyed, and galaxies threatened. We stood as one. We are the defenders of humanity. We are the Emperor's blazing sword and the Imperium's crushing fist. Hundreds of billions of hands ready to die for our mission in the cold, unforgiving space. We are the Imperial Navy. For 10,000 years, the Eye of Terror has spewed its ageless horrors into the galaxy, gnawing at the eternal glories of the Imperium, at the very soul of mankind itself. And for every one of those 10,000 years, the fortress world of Cadia has held the gate closed. An adamantium bastion, granted strength by flesh and bone, and seeded purpose by faith in the Emperor's holy light. But as the darkness grew ever deeper, and the blaze of the Astronomicon guttered like a wind-blown candle, The Eye of Terror pulse, its baleful energy spilling anew across the stars.
With a shriek that echoed through nightmares from Medusa to Ultramar, the Black Fleet slipped its moorings. An endless tide of heretics, traitors, demons, and madmen, whose desperate fealty was given over to a single damned soul. Abaddon the Despoiler, inheritor of the arch-traitor Horus's reviled legacy. The 13th Black Crusade, herald to a fresh age of nightmare, had begun. Stalwart Cadia would be the first to feel its wrath. A Blackstone Fortress! Without our shields, that accursed Hulk will scour Cadia clean! Repairs to the Null Array are underway. We require only a matter of days. The Magos asks for time. I have none to give. My wolves will buy all that he needs. Alert my battle barge to prepare for my arrival. By the Fang, I'll not die without a fight. Sven Bloodhowl, stalwart of a brotherhood famed for their courage. But sometimes, courage is not enough. Initialization failed. Null array inert. Insufficient power. Insufficient power. Rerouting. Reroute failed. Power surge. Processing. No data. Power building. Null array deploying. the bravery of Sven Bloodhound, nor the labors of Magus Clan, but through the intercession of a mysterious benefactor. But the respite was short-lived. As the cheers faded, traitor warships blackened the skies. The siege of Cadia Secundus had begun. The forces of the Despoiler came in numbers uncounted, but the walls of Casa Kraff held. Even in that darkest of days, the flame of humanity's valor burned bright. With faith burning in their hearts, the defenders held the Chaos Hordes at bay, uncaring of the losses they bore in exchange. But flesh fails and faith flickers. With every bloody moment, Abaddon's forces drew closer to victory. You've done your part, Admiral. I hereby take command of this engagement. Magos, your reputation precedes you, but you choose a bleak time to come to Cadia. Bleaker than you know. My adepts uncovered pylons on Eriad 6. They are a perfect match for those present on Cadia, but were reduced to null during the Fourth Black Crusade. Abaddon. His malice holds greater purpose than we knew. Agreed. Ruined pylon fields have been discovered on many worlds. All are made by the Despoiler. Why? Their heritage is alien, their purpose unknown. The pylons' forges remain shrouded, known only to the Omnissiah. But their purpose is revealed. They contain the Eye of Terror. If they are destroyed, the Immaterium will claim all. The Imperium will be no more. The pylons must be safeguarded. They are our only weapon against the encroachment of chaos. But I need time to study. Go, make your studies. May the Emperor guide you.
I mean you no harm. But you are an abomination. I prefer honored guest. But abomination or not, you and I have common cause. Logic dictates otherwise. Then you don't seek to understand the nature of this matrix. You comprehend its secrets? I was there when they first awakened. Or perhaps I wasn't. Memory is such a fickle thing. Neither of us desires to see this galaxy ripped asunder by the Imperial ones. Destroy me if you wish. Nothing will change. For me. For you. For this world. Show me! The region of space now known as the Eye of Terror was once home to the Eldari Empire. A prideful, sensuous people, the Eldari realized too late the perils of excess. The fourth Chaos God, Slanish, was born from their debauchery, its coming heralded by a psychic scream that shook real space to its foundations and devastated the Eldari. The Crone Worlds are all that remain of the Eldari's fallen domain. They are blighted planets, consumed by the spreading unreality of the Eye of Terror, and twisted to new and nightmarish realities. Though the Crone Worlds are overrun by the servants of the Dark Gods, the Eldari have not entirely abandoned them. They cannot, for only here can the treasured Spirit Stones be harvested and thus the souls of the dying be saved from thirsting slanish. Such expeditions are fraught with peril, for there are few more dangerous places amongst the stars. Many who seek the Crone Worlds do not return. The Eldari have never recovered from the horrors of the Fall. They are a fractured, dwindling population on the brink of extinction. Most dwell aboard star-treading craft worlds, honing their peerless minds along the disciplined paths in the hope of staving off the perils of decadence and thus preventing a second, final catastrophe. But not all Eldari can bear the rigidity of craft world life. Some depart their homes, seeking adventure amongst the stars as corsairs. Such lives are fraught with danger, but are also rich with excitement these outcasts can be found in every corner of the galaxy, blazing a brief but exhilarating trail before madness claims them. The Drakari too live outside the structures of the Eldari path. Corrupt and cruel, they keep Slanish at bay, not with discipline and spirit stones, but by feasting on the torment of others. Raiders and slavers all, the Drakari are a blight upon the galaxy, as selfish as they are sadistic, as untrustworthy as they are cunning. But in recent days, the barriers between the Eldari factions have begun to crumble, with ever more gathering beneath the banner of one named Ivrain. These Inari keep their beliefs hidden, as hidden as their intentions. Should they be encountered on the battlefield, caution will serve you well. Ten thousand years have passed since the galaxy burned in the fires of the Horus Heresy. 
Ten millennia since the greatest of the Emperor's Primarchs fell into the grasp of eternal damnation and tore the galaxy asunder. Horus Lupercal may be dead, his body ashes and his memory the stuff of a cursed legend, but the wounds he wrought yet gape in the hide of an embattled Imperium. For the battle against Chaos knows no end. Many of Horus' servants survived the civil wars, and they have not forgotten their defeat. When the Warmaster fell, they retreated to the Eye of Terror and waged battle anew. Greatest of these was Abaddon the Despoiler, Horus' greatest living heir. Abaddon took the title of Warmaster for his own and embarked upon a long and bloody campaign to succeed where his fallen master had failed. Twelve Black Crusades he launched against the Imperium of Man. Twelve world-shattering campaigns to forever alter the balance of power. Now, as the Millennium draws to a close, a vast armada of traitors slips its moorings as Abaddon launches his 13th and perhaps final strike. As the tide of chaos breaks against the Cadian Gate, the Imperium holds its breath. Faith alone cannot hold back these bleak waters. Only valor will serve. My name. What is my name? through Abaddon's blood also. It is his weakness. Once, he was mankind's greatest champion against a stultifying Imperium. Now, he is nothing more than a relic of the past. A herald to my ascension. My hour is coming. 
I offer a toast to the War Master. The Imperium of Man. A galaxy-spanning empire in decline. Once, humanity stood on the brink of taming the stars. A golden age of light and glory beckoned. But men have ever been prone to temptation and lured to stubborn pride. Now the Space Marines, intended as the vanguard of mankind's ascension, fight ceaselessly to prevent their father's work sliding into ruin. The Adeptus Mechanicus, custodians of wondrous technology, take to the stars in hope of unearthing lost secrets from the very darkest of ages, and to impose the Omnissiah's will upon a scattered galaxy. But nowhere is the Imperium's might more plainly seen than in the vessels of its star-spanning navy. As war rages, colossal warships slip anchor to smite the foe with the righteous fury of the faithful. Such vessels are both Imperium's stalwart shield and gleaming spear, shining in the impenetrable dark of space. It takes more than a man to command such a warship. It takes a hero, strong in will and unflinching of purpose. Without such heroes, the Emperor's light would surely wane. Admiral Spire is one such hero. Forged in the hallways of the vaunted Scola Progenium, tempered in the cursed days of Abaddon's 12th Black Crusade. Long has he been lost, but now, freed from the Immaterium's clutches, he returns to shed his blood in the Emperor's cause once more. Any who seek to sweep mankind from the stars must first reckon with Spire. Many have sought his head. All have failed. But one hero alone may not be enough to change the Imperium's fortunes. It will take thousands, even millions, for mankind to reclaim its footing in the Eye of Terror's gaping maw and millions more to hold it. Such a task will not be easy. Cadia is demon-hunted rubble, and the Imperium itself is scarred, torn in two by the Cicatrix Maledictum. But it is the nature of heroes to triumph in adversity, and of faith to flourish in the dark. The Imperium of Man. A million worlds scattered across an uncaring galaxy. A million worlds forever under threat from the machinations of cursed traitors and perfidious Xenos. It is an empire consumed by war, by the very battle for survival itself. For there is no peace amongst the stars. The Space Marines, genetically modified warriors who know no fear, spearhead every counter-assault, taking the battle to the heart of the foe. From the smoke-wreathed horror of Adeptus Mechanicus Forge Worlds sail warships of fearsome potency, their weapons blessed by the Machine God and their crews dedicated to the Omnissiah's holy cause. The Scola Progenium molds callow flesh into leaders, officers of the Imperial Navy, the greatest fleet ever to span the stars. These heroes dedicate their life to the Imperium's defense, confronting the ceaseless threat of chaos wherever it manifests. The war against the Dark Gods and their worshippers is the eternal battle for the soul of mankind, for the future of the galaxy itself. It is the forge upon which true heroes are struck and legends tempered. Admiral Spire is one such legend, savior of the Gothic Sector, vanquisher of Warmaster Abaddon's 12th Black Crusade. For centuries he has been lost, trapped in the shifting tides of the Immaterium, while in pursuit of the hated foe. 
Such travails would drive an ordinary man to madness or into the clutches of the very gods he once opposed. But Spire is no ordinary man, and his time is coming once more. We're out. Praise the Emperor, but I can see the stars again. Receiving distress signals. The region's alive with them. According to the timestamps, Admiral. The year. It's 999M41. We've been lost in the warp for over 800 years. And Cadia, the hymnals report that. It's been destroyed, sir. There's a lot of confusion out there, sir. And Admiral. Cadia fell at Abaddon's hand. Then we are returned not a moment too soon. Navigator, chart a course to the Cadian system. We may be an age too late to join the battle, but revenge is still within our grasp. Warp engines online. Geller Field holding. This is Admiral Spire to all Imperial vessels. Rally at coordinates 154 554. This isn't over. At long last, at the cost of countless millions of lives, Abaddon the Despoiler finally met his end, and a debt owed since the darkest days of the Horus Heresy was at last repaid. But his death could not undo the legacy of devastation he had wrought. The Imperium would face other battles against the Dark Gods. This was no ending, but a new beginning. Cadia had fallen, but its name and legend lived on. Warriors of mankind, the Emperor has tested us, and we have not been found wanting. By his will and our faithfulness, we have journeyed through darkness, through fire, and now emerge into the brilliant light of a new dawn. But that light shines only so long as we keep it fed. Through our sacrifice, through the valor of the Imperial Navy, mankind shall endure. There is no peace in these stars, only a crucible of war in which our faith is forever tested. Our service we owe to our comrades, our lives we spend for the Imperium, and our souls, now and forevermore, belong to the Emperor. With the Emperor's foremost son as Lord Commander of the Imperium, a new hope stirred. Long ago, before mankind was even a footnote in galactic history, the Necrons ruled the stars. But the march of time and grievous war forced them into hibernation. For 60 million years, they slumbered, Untold legions entombed in deathless slumber, waiting for the hour in which their rule would once more shape the galaxy. Now, at long last, that time has arrived. With the coming of Abaddon's Black Crusade, life stirs beneath dead worlds. The mad Pharaoh Kefrek rouses the Neferu dynasty to war. Ships of living metal blacken the stars, immune to the perils of an uncaring void, harnessing technology far beyond mankind's grasp. These vessels bestride the stellar wastes of the gods of old, reuniting the sundered worlds of the Neferu in a single glorious purpose. But Kefrek's plans go deeper than mere reconquest. The expansion of Dominion is but one step along the path that will either see him master of all he surveys, or the world bordering the Eye of Terror reduced to ash. In the deepest eons of history, before mankind had even emerged from primordial ooze, the Necrontia dominated the galaxy. But unity receded 
even as the bounds of their domain expanded. Fearing the collapse of their civilization, the leaders of the Necrontier assailed the Old Ones, seeking to wrest from them the secret of eternal life. The galaxy blazed with the fires of war. Too late, the Necrontier realized the impossibility of victory. Thus, they embraced damnation. The Star Gods, the Catan, walked amongst them, offering prized immortality and long-sought victory. So ended the Necrontier of old. Betrayed by the ambition of Zarek, the Silent King, they were dragged in chains to the fires of biotransference, transmuted from fragile and radiation-cursed bodies to forms more suited for the ravages of war. Stripped of flesh, of mortality, even of their souls, the Necrontier passed from history. Only the Necrons remained. Now enslaved to the will of the Catan, the Necrons at last altered the course of the war. Cosmic battle lines buckled and at last broke beneath a tide of immortal fury. As the last of the Old Ones fell, Zarek led what remained of his people in revolt against their Catan masters. The Star Gods were overthrown, shattered into shards and forced to serve those they had once ruled. But centuries of war had taken their toll on both the Necrons and the galaxy. To preserve what remained of their empire, the Necrons retreated to colossal stasis tombs to sleep away millennia while their domain healed and their rivals passed into dust. Freed from the shackles of time, the passing millennia meant nothing to them. Sixty million years have passed and the ancient tombs are once more stirring to life. The Necrons, forgotten by all but the Eldari, are returning to claim what was theirs. They will abide no trespassers. With the awakening of their Therion, Kefrek the Unbroken, the Neferu dynasty arises once more. Undying legions stir in the forgotten dirt of a hundred worlds. The reconquest of the galaxy has begun. Oh, Mark. Let the legions fly. Oh, Mark. Unleash the power of the Neferu. Oh, Mark. Our worlds are infested. Scour them clean. This is my hour. You prove yourself quite the ruler, Abaddon. You understand what Abaddon and Kefrek did not. That madness and vainglory lose more crowns than they win. Have a care you don't forget this lesson. The Eldari are humbled, at least for now. For a dying race, they are rather resilient. If only they learn their place. One theron falls, another rises, as it should be. All that remains is to give the order and claim your destiny. The Tyranids. 
the great devourer. In all the stars, there has never been a Xenos race more inimical to the survival of mankind. Indeed, they are the bane of all other life. Their origins are but poorly understood. The stuff of rumor and supposition and nightmare. The Adepts of Mars believe that a single, unknowable consciousness guides the High Fleets about their voracious purpose. This consciousness knows only unquenchable hunger. Hive ships serve as synapse nodes, spreading the influence of the Tyranid Hive Mind across the stars. Such is the hive mind's suffocating will that the warp is distorted for light years around. Confusion and terror spread before the hive fleets advance as dreams darken and madness spreads. As the hive fleets advance, the suffocating embrace quenches the Emperor's light and drowns doomed worlds in psychic shadow. But the greatest threat comes from within. Foul creatures known as gene stealers infiltrate unvigilant worlds. A patriarch arises from the population's subverted flesh and projects a psychic beacon to draw the hive fleet ever closer. As the gene stealer cult grows in power, they emerge from the shadows of their benighted world. Civil war rages, shaking the planet asunder. Then the skies darken with spores and the High Fleet's voracious tendrils. The cultists exult at the fulfillment of prophecy and their ascension into the light. Their delusions die with them. There are many High Fleets, each but a facet of the immeasurable Tyranid threat. Leviathan is the greatest and has wrought ruin on a scale never before witnessed. Though the great rift arising from Cadia's ruin has severed many of Leviathan's tendrils, many more remain. Even now, one is surging towards the Eye of Terror. And so, the 13th Black Crusade ended neither in victory for the Imperium or for chaos, but with the endless hunger of High Fleet Leviathan. Admiral Spire's fleet, scattered and leaderless, was swiftly consumed. And then there was silence for a time. The galaxy held its breath, hoping that the Leviathan's hunger was at last sated. It did so in vain. Admiral, we're reading signatures exiting Cadian space! Impossible! Nothing survived! Emperor's light, no! The astropath is convulsing! We can't get a hymnal to Terra! Blessed Emperor, get us out of here, all speed! They must be warned! Someone must! Orcs are amongst the deadliest of the Xenos races. Multitudinous, belligerent, and possessed of brutal cunning, they spread across the stars like a green tide. Even in the war-riven sectors around the Eye of Terror, forever beset by chaos, they rank amongst the greatest threats. As battle raged between the Imperium and the dread forces of chaos, the Orcs gained a foothold upon ravaged worlds using them as staging areas from which they could slingshot deeper into Imperial territory. 
Orc technology is ramshackle, but terrifyingly effective. Combining mismatched components, scavenged gear, and intuitive leaps to forge weapon systems whose inner workings baffle the most experienced of the Imperium's adepts, but lack for nothing in sheer unbridled firepower. In much the same way, an Orc Warlord can take a multitude of squabbling clans and forge them into an unstoppable army. Such a war has the sheer unbridled might necessary to conquer the stars themselves, leaving naught but rubble in its wake. As its momentum grows, so do its numbers grow, swollen by green skins drawn to the promise of bloodlust, teeth and loot. The fortress Oubliette of Nemesis Tessera was once the Inquisition's most closely guarded secret, a bastion of knowledge and rigor, and a convocation point for the Imperium's most trusted servants. No more. The onset of the 13th Black Crusade set the world awash with treachery and war. Though Nemesis Tessera's dread secrets were stolen, the world itself endured thanks to the heroism of the Space Wolves and Inquisitor Ciro. From the doomed hive world of Kima Lomas, to the seditious penal world of Avaris Gulag, the sector remains crippled by corruption and heresy. Yet in the forsaken fields of the Obsidian Depth, Mutation, madness, and all their damned siblings are curiously absent. It is as if the Obsidian Depths border onto something not yet adequately defined, or perhaps waiting to be discovered. The Forge World Agrippina itself would have fallen millennia ago, but for its formidable defenses. Now bolstered by the Cadian Diaspora, even with Cadia lying in ruins, its scions stand firm beside Agrippina. And it is well that this is so, for the world's technological wonders have proven an irresistible lure to Chaos Warp Smiths. The Agrippina sector is a linchpin in the Cadian Gate's defenses, a laboring manufactorum that feeds nearby worlds with weaponry and much needed munitions. Wealth abounds within its borders and it supplies the Astra Militarum with many of its finest regiments. Bellis Corona is a vital anchorage, serving as the Imperial Navy's primary base in the Segmentum Obscurus. Over the millennia, its importance has only grown and it now acts as the Imperium's administrative capital for the entire Segmentum. In the prelude of the 13th Black Crusade, the arch-traitor Typhus descended on Bellus Corona, spreading a devastating contagion named in whispers as the Plague of Unbelief. Despite Typhus' assault and the loss of billions of lives, the Sector held firm. But in recent days, Psychers stationed in Bellus Corona have suffered total collapse, their minds torn asunder by some strange and terrible shadow moving through the Immaterium. This can only bode ill. Chinchar is the mineral heart of the Segmentum Obscurus, feeding the manufactorums of Agrippina and a dozen other sectors. There are few truly colonized planets in this sector, as worlds rich in mineral resource tend towards the inhospitable. The citizens of Chinchar are likely to be slaves or penal workers, living out miserable lives in arid mines or aboard freighters. But for some renegades, there are other options. Resnor, the last resting place of vessels whose fury once shuddered the stars. A world rich in resource for those in need, 
and fraught with peril besides. For it is not only sunlight that caresses the planet's surface, but the toxic emissions from a thousand reactors still trapped in decaying orbit. To the eye of Terra's galactic southwest lies the barren expanse of the Sentinel Worlds. The Imperium has only the sparsest foothold in this region, and many mysteries abound. There are so many rumors, so many drunken spaces tales, that it had become impossible to separate fact from fiction. But the feeling remains, some ancient, buried instinct, that something terrible lies sleeping amidst the Sentinel Worlds and it would be best not to rouse it. A harsh realm of perpetual gloom that breeds a harsh people. With a dark and polluted sky, Medusa's sun rarely reaches the planet's surface. It is a world of highly unstable geology, with earthquakes and volcanic eruptions constantly reshaping the mountains and seas. The world's resources have long been mined to exhaustion, plundered by the Telstarax, an ancient space station that hangs in orbit to this day. Medusa, then, is a world trapped in the past, marred by old wounds and burdened with pride and fading glory. Yet it remains a powerful symbol and a weighty prize to he who would claim it. What glories Belial IV once knew are long behind it, destroyed a millennia ago by the onset of chaos. Yet it remains almost holy ground for the alien Eldari, who once counted this now barren waste as a jewel within their star-spanning empire. Caliban, a world torn asunder by betrayal and haunted by the treacheries of the ancient past. What remains is shrouded in mystery and shielded from the prying eyes of the Inquisition by the Dark Angels who once called this world home. But war has a way of bringing secrets to light. As conflict rages across the sector, who knows what glimmers of truth might flare beneath the light of dying stars? With warp storms rendering astropathic communications erratic, Segmentum Obscura's High Command continued experiencing difficulty coordinating its forces. Imperial commanders were advised that communications received from distant sources were not to be trusted. Scattered reports indicated that, in addition to chaos incursions, Scarus nurtured an increasing greenskin menace. Eventually, High Command took this threat seriously. They acted too late. What would become known as the Green Crusade had grown from a few scattered and disorganized tribes to a mighty war that threatened to overwhelm the Imperium's embattled holdings. With the capture of Forge World Mordak's Prime, the Green Crusade's momentum redoubled. Survivors from the rechristened Mordaka Prime report seeing hundreds of Gargans being fashioned from the debris and skies thick with the choking black smoke of Orc cruisers. It can only be a matter of time before other worlds share Mordax's fate. The Skella subsector is located to the galactic west of the Eye of Terror. Its capital planet, Skellis, is a feral world and was once the homeworld of the Sons of Malice. Once loyal space marines, they turned on the Imperium in the years leading to the 13th Black Crusade. The original name of the Sons of Malice has been lost to Imperial record, but it is speculated that they were one of the 20 chapters of the Astartes Priestess, 
a founding created with the express purpose of safeguarding the region surrounding the Eye of Terror. The cold and unforgiving wastes of Skellis provide the Sons of Malice no shortage of barbaric recruits. Indeed, the Sun's foul religious practices trace their origins to those of the tribesmen from which they sprang. A scouring conducted by the Cadian 331st was thought to have ended these grisly traditions. Certainly the natives were thought exterminated and the Sons of Malice driven off. But rumors have surfaced suggesting that the world is not so empty as was believed. It would seem that the Sons of Malice still stake a claim to this miserable planet. They will surely do whatever they must to make it theirs once more. The Eidolon Sector lies at the heart of the Eye of Terror, at the point where reality bleeds away into the formless tides of the Immaterium. Stronghold of the Despoiler, headwater of every Black Crusade, there is no mortal law here that is not imposed by cruelty, and no physical law beyond the whim of the Dark Gods. The Plague Planet, home of Mortarion and his Death Guard Traitor Legion. This is a world of 10,000 contagions, where skies weep with pus and seas teem with disease. Sortiaris is the current homeworld of the Thousand Suns Traitor Legion. Ringed by the screaming souls of the betrayed dead and blasted by the tides of the warp. It is a planet no sane man would tread without cause, or at least without a numberless army at his back. Oliensis throne of decadence, and bane of many a righteous soul. The world is a living perversion, a deathless monument to the pursuit of pleasure above all else. Though the world's origins are argued over by the Adepts of Terror, it is known that at least one Space Marine chapter met its demise on the Oliensis surface. Reports suggest that those who fall to Oliensis embrace are reborn as blasphemous mirrors of their prior selves, shackled to the will of Slanish. Drakasi, corn slaughter pit. Only the strongest survive the crucible of its arenas, and then only until the favor of the gods turns against them once more. Eidolon itself was once an Eldari world, but now lies shackled by the madness of chaos, with an empire dedicated to each of the chaos powers constantly vying with the others for dominance. It is said that there are more ways to die on Eidolon than anywhere else, though as no one ever returns, this can be considered little more than rumor. The Cadian Sector is amongst the most vital of the Imperium's defenses, guarding as it does the only known navigable route out of the Eye of Terror. So long as the Cadian Gate holds, the Imperium remains secure. After 10,000 years of defiance, Cadia finally fell during the opening stages of the 13th Black Crusade. Now it is little more than an honored memory and an example to those who strive in the service of mankind. <laughs>